So a lot of people have asked me how one goes about getting their PRCA card and um, I'm going to try to give you a little bit of insight as to how you could do that and some tips and what the recommendations and requirements are. So if you want to learn how to get your PRCA card or at least apply for it, watch this video. How are you? So a lot of people ask me how to get your PRCA card and I've had mine for a little over a year now and I really don't have an answer for them. Um, I can tell you what you need to do to apply, I can tell you what you need to do to get past your permit, but I really can't tell you what to do to get your card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to explain to you how I got mine and how long it took. Um, for those of you that don't know, I shoot for AP, I shoot for Getty, I've been in the wire service industry for over 30 years and I've been videographer, I've been a still photographer, I've shot Super Bowls, World Series, uh, National Championship Games, 16 Daytona 500s, uh, and I was really big into boxing for a while, Floyd Mayweather, Mike Tyson, Sugar Ray Leonard, Oscar De La Hoya, and um, I decided to get into rodeo. So about two years ago I started to research the PRCA and found out that they were a huge organization with a lot of members. and. Um, they have people that are, they have judges, they have stock contractors, actually the animals are even registered. So there's a fee to get in and there's a process that you need to do to go ahead and get your card or become a member. So this is what we're going to talk about today and I'm going to tell you how to become a PRCA photographer. So the first step in the process to become a PRCA photographer is to uh, put together a portfolio of some rodeos that you've shot. And the PRCA is looking for 20 to 30 good photos to show them what you can do and show them you know what kind of uh, photographer you are and that you understand safety you understand what they're looking for um, a lot of people apply and get denied the first time um, the angles might be wrong they might be out of focus blurry the action might not be what they're looking for and um, you have to take all this into consideration so what I would suggest is that you look at some of the PRCA magazines they have a, a monthly magazine and they put it out and look at the photos, look at the ads, look at some of the stuff that's in there so that you can get a better idea as to what they're looking for, what angles they're looking for, uh, where the feet need to be on the rider, where the hands need to be placed. Um, there's a science to it and there's a, a proven method as to what they're looking for. So the only thing that I can suggest is that you look at it closely and you study it and you ask questions. Um, if you can find a local photographer that's been in the PRCA has their card that you can work with, that would be amazing. There was nothing automatic, everything was uh, done by the photographer, the focus was done by the photographer, uh, the film advance was done by the photographer, um, and uh, that first picture you took better be a good one, because it's going to be a second or two before you can shoot another one, advance the film. Nowadays, it's a whole lot different. My, my camera now shoots 11 frames a second. It does its own focusing. Uh, it, uh, it, it's just amazing what the technology, how the technology has changed. I used to have to go home and take my rolls of film. I developed them myself. 
and I used to hang them in the living room off a, a wire so they would be, be dry the next morning so I could stop doing my proof from them. Uh, the best thing I could tell them, and Alex, you, you know from your, your photography, is shoot, 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 everything you can shoot. Uh, and look, look at the, uh, the pictures that other photographers uh, that are publishing have taken and see what kind of pictures they're getting of, of the way the horse is bucked, the way the bull's bucked, the way the calf ropers operate, and get good pictures from it. And you learn what to look for when you've got that camera up to your head and you're looking at the picture through the camera. You, you eventually, muscle memory and whatever your subconscious sees will tell you when you should shoot, which is before the actual event happens. Because if you shoot when it happens, you're too late. Uh, they, and don't expect to get rich. <laughs> the next step is to get, and this, I don't know if it changes or not, but my step was to reach out to a photographer of the year or the nominee for a photographer of the year for the past three years. You have to reach out to one of those five people. And hopefully they know your work or hopefully you've been talking to them the whole time. And they have to sign off and say, yes, I, I trust this person. I will vouch for this person. And that's the hardest part. I had people for seven months tell me they would get back to me and they never did. And uh, nothing I can do about it. That's just the way, this is just the way it goes. So um, hopefully you have a relationship. So they have to sign off on you. And then you also have to have a PRCA gold card member, which is a photographer that's been in there, I believe 25 years or 10 years, either way. You have to have two letters, two letters of recommendation that somebody will vouch for you. And like I said, that's the hardest part. If anybody can take photos, anybody can take great photos, anybody can you know, do what we do. Nobody's the best, everybody's equal. So once you've submitted your portfolio and they've written you back that yes, you can apply, you're gonna go ahead and pay your 300 bucks, but um, this will get you a permit. And a permit is like a temporary driver's license. You're gonna have access to some of the stuff. Um, but once again, you need to pay attention and you need to talk to somebody that's been there before and they can, they can advise you and take their advice, you know, pretty solidly. Um, so once you get your permit, you're like a rookie. Um, you are allowed on the dirt. You pay your insurance so that you can go on the dirt. And then you, you go at it. You um, pay attention to the stock. You pay attention to the riders. You pay attention to the judges. You pay attention to the pickup men and you pay attention to the clown or bullfighter if they're there. There's a lot of things to look out for besides the animal that's you know, coming at you at 50 miles an hour. Um, you always have to keep your head on a swivel. There's, like I said, there's just a lot going on. On top of that, you've got to pay attention to pyrotechnics. You've got to pay attention to the mud or the rain or the snow, wherever it is you are. If you're indoors, you've got to pay attention to the lighting. All this makes, you know, that's a lot to learn and they're going to look at your photos when you're done and the community's going to say wow we really messed up by letting this person in or they're going to be like wow this person seems to know what they're doing uh maybe we can have them come into another rodeo or maybe we can have them you know do some side work for us or some advertising work for us or some sponsor stuff for us but um there's there's a lot that you can do that's not just rodeo based uh when when the competitors arrive they have to shine in they have to check in they they look at the heat sheets they look at the slack um, if you don't know what slack is, I'm not going to tell you. You're going to have to research that, but that's a very important part of a rodeo that a lot of people don't know about. Um, so what I would say is, you know, once you get in, you have to do five rodeos. You have to complete five rodeos, and I don't mean a Friday night is one rodeo, Saturday night's a second rodeo. The whole weekend is a rodeo, and a rodeo includes slack. So you do slack, you do the first performance, second performance, third performance if there is one. And then you have to upload all your photos to the PRCA because they want to see what, ki what kind of shooter you are. Um, how your style is, where you set up, where you're placed in the arena, um, and how well you pay attention to some of the other things that you really need to pay attention to. All right, so when the photographer gets here, the first thing you wanna do is come to the birdhouse, find your secretary, and sign in on the sign-in sheet. She'll give you your day sheet, and it's gonna be a post. It's gonna show everything, all your contestants you're gonna have, so you'll be ready to go for the rodeo. Make sure that she knows you're here and then make sure that you paid for your insurance. So we're gonna go in here real quick. This is what they do, see? Everybody check in. So this is it. This is what we're doing. We check in, see? 
So this is where the office is. This is what everybody everybody gets done. All right. So now you're you're at your fifth rodeo. You've you finished your rodeo. Um, you've started the process of you know finishing up your permit. Now it's time to do a safety check. You have to do a, a, an in arena evaluation. And what that is is a PRCA photographer such as myself or somebody that has their card will be able to actually go out there with you. Um, see how you react, see how you set up, see how you take photos, see if you chip in there and you're not paying attention to the, to the pickup men. And um, just to make sure that you're safe, not only for yourself and not only for the competitors, but you also have to be safe for the animals. These animals are, are high, dollar, high dollar animals. Um, they're professionals. They're just as professional as you, as me, as the rider. And if you were to hurt an animal, that would be a very bad thing. You know, nobody wants to see these animals get hurt. They're, they're why we're there. So, um, you know, stay safe, keep your head on a swivel, and uh, hopefully you'll get signed off. Um, talk to some of the stock contractors to maybe get access or stock to the, to the, uh, the committees. The committees are the people that you reach out to first. They're the ones that are gonna let you have whatever access you can get. Um, I'll tell you right now that unless you have a PRCA card, you will not be on the dirt, you will not be in the chutes. Uh, most likely you'll be behind a fence, behind a gate, or they're going to have you up in the stands, front row, maybe shooting some, some long lens stuff. Uh, but you will not be on the dirt. Um, the liability is too great. You most likely don't have the experience with, with bulls, with uh, rough stock. And, you know, even something as simple as steer wrestling, you can get hurt. The, the action happens most of the time in the middle of the arena, but that horse continues to run to the corner and then turns. And if you're not paying attention, you'll get clipped. Um, a lot of rodeo photographers get injured. It's a very, very serious business. Uh, and uh, a lot of people are injury prone. Uh, they need, don't need to be in that arena. Uh, you can get hurt. I, I, don't, I don't know a rodeo photographer yet that hasn't been injured in some way by, by on livestock or being in the wrong place at the wrong time, uh, it's, uh, you need to be very, very careful. We're all PRCA photographers. We all have a job to do and we're all good. So if you want to be good, submit, get your letters, get your card, and then wow, the world is yours. Um, a lot of these photographers have been in this industry for a while, and I mean like 20, 30, 40 years. Mike Cristelli, who taught me, my mentor, he's been going at this since 1968, and he's still kicking butt. He's phenomenal. And um, you have to respect them. They've been there forever. They know the people. They've done generations of families, the same photo every year. As the grands, you know, the kids get, the kids are born, the grandkids are born. They know families. They're embedded in these families. And they've been there a while, so you don't, don't just expect to walk in and take their job or take their photos or, you know, it's a very tight knit family. And I sat back and I learned and I listened and I kept my mouth shut. And you just observe and you watch. And little by little, people will start warming up to you. Who are you? Who's this? What's that guy doing? You know, there's a lot of people that show up with cameras that aren't supposed to be there. And it's very well noted. And those people usually get kicked out pretty quickly. And I mean, talking to even people in the stands. So to get this, this card is a badge and it's, an, it, it's a privilege, it's not a right, it's a privilege. So if you're privileged enough to get your card and keep your card, then you're gonna have a really good time and you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna feel the rodeo and feel how wonderful this sport is. It really, really, truly is. It's one of the oldest sports out there and it wasn't really a sport, it's, it's a job. You have to be a professional to do this all the way around the board. Like I said, stock contractor, timer, judge, uh, bullfighter, pickup man, shoot boss, even the announcers pro. Everybody has a card, everybody's earned their spot, and hopefully you'll be there. You know, Guy, girl, it, it doesn't matter. Everybody, if you're in the PRCA, you deserve to be here. And I would like to welcome you.